Okay, three, two, one. I'm going to the Book of Jubilees. Ah, what do you know about the Book of Jubilees? What do I know about the Book of Jubilees? All right, so if we looked at each chapter, take a little bit, maybe we should. All right, if you forgive me today, I'll be skipping around a little bit. Our goal was chapters 12 and 13. But, you know, when you bow your head down and you start asking for stuff, you're just given much more than, well, I, at least this is what's happening for me. Giving me, given much more than I can truly handle. So, if we sat here and Go into chapter one. This book of Jubilees gives you a breakdown of what each of them are. So this is going to start with Moses receiving the tablet and the law. Now, I want to say, we're going to skip over this. But on this quest and this journey, is a repeated issue. Is the only reason you have my book is to learn my laws. Doing this one came to the realization all this other stuff is for me. I'm not generally speaking for anybody. For me, it's just becomes me. Making these videos and sharing them with you is wonderful to an extent. But I don't really get anything unless people donate. Now, what do you, the viewer, get out of it? Some knowledge about this and that. Some trivia, some ammo to say to somebody, well, that's not true. The book actually says this. Where does it go from there? If we don't know how to worship him, what laws to follow so that we are clean, Knowing how to stay clean, how to knowing how to be clean, stay clean, clean others, then what good is it to know where we're from, who we even are? What the point of this captivity to us is? <clears throat> there's there's reasoning behind all this. And unfortunately. What I'm going to show you today, it's got nothing to do with any of the reasoning of that. If we do not study the law, accept the law, and exude the law, then we're not, we're not going to make it. So, Maybe we should change things up a bit. And today and be like like a graduation for us all. That's what today should be like. So if you know somebody that you want to graduate with you, you should probably get them to watch this with you or they're not going to. They're just going to understand what they see a few years later after the information's been through the wash cycle. If you look at society right now, they are back to the videos that was presented years ago that America is the promised land, which means they didn't get to the point after that to find out there's two promised lands. 
if you do not worship me, you, this is the promise, you will go into captivity. So today we're going to find out all about that land. And we're going to find out about our homeland or the other promise. Now, when I say these things, we should keep in mind. The road's not over. There's, 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 there's a lot to go. <coughs> Thank you. So we should all think to come back to these where Moses receives the law and instruction. So in Jubilees chapter 1, this is the material. In Jubilees chapter 2, this is a, the history of the 22 distinct acts of creation on the sixth day. Institution of the Sabbath, its observance by the highest angels, with whom Israel is afterwards to be associated. Chapter 3 of the Book of Jubilees is Adam names all creatures. And you must understand, this starts with Moses, not with Adam. You might think it's out of order unless you start to view the importance. The creation of Eve, the enactment of Levitical laws of purification, Adam and Eve in paradise. Now, isn't this weird? Levitical laws and Adam and Eve. Their sin and their expulsion from paradise, law of covering one's shame, enacted, and Adam and Eve live in Elda. Chapter 4 is Cain and Abel and other children of Adam. Enos, Kenan, Mahalel, Jared. Enoch and his history is contained between verses 13 through 15. Four sacred places. Verse 26 discusses Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. 27 and 28 is the death of Adam and Cain. Shem, Ham, and Japheth are discussed through 29 through 32. Now, in book 5, the angels of God marry daughters of men, corrupt all creation, punishment of the fallen and their children, the final judgment announced, the Day of Atonement, the deluge foretold, Noah builds the ark, the deluge. Chapter 6, Sacrifice of Noah, God's covenant with Noah, eating of blood forbidden. See, these things are what we need to teach our children. Moses bids bidden to renew this law against the eating of blood. Bow set in the clouds for a sign, that is the rainbow. Feast of weeks instituted, history of observances, the feasts of the new moons, and the division of the years into 364 days. Chapter 7. Noah plants a vineyard and offers a sacrifice, becomes drunk and exposes his persons, his person, the cursing of Canaan and blessing of Shem and Ham, Noah's sons and grandsons and their cities. Noah reaches his sons regarding the cause of the deluge. Excuse me, teaches his sons regarding the causes of the deluge and 
admonishes them to avoid the eating of blood and murder, to keep the law regarding fruit trees and let the land lie shallow or fallow every seven years, as Enoch had directed. Chapter 7, Book of Jubilees. And in the seventh year, excuse me, seventh week in the first year thereof, in this jubilee, Noah planted vine on the mountain on which the ark rested, named Lubar. One of the mount, one of the Ararat mountains, and they produced fruit in the fourth year, and he guarded their fruit and gathered it in this year in the seventh month. Okay, so let's take a little sidetrack. Mountains of Ararat, which should be like a nice one for us. So we hear it's Lubar Mountains, uh, right? So in the book of Genesis, mountain. Mountains of Ararat, uh, this is what they add, are used to designate the region which Noah's Ark comes to rest through the Great Flood. Corresponds to the ancient Assyrian term Uratu and the Armenian kingdom, excuse me, and Ax Exonim, or whatever, word for the, uh, for the Armenian kingdom of the Van. All right, so since the Middle Age, Ages, since the Middle Ages, now that does not say before the Middle Ages, the mountains of Ararat, so before the Middle Ages, they knew exactly where that shit happened. Since the Middle Ages, they've been saying something new and began, began, and oops, and began, you see what I'm saying? To be identified with a mountain in present Turkey. So, what is that really saying to us? We've been here before the idea of they say or they want us to believe. So they want us to believe Turkey. It is known as Maasi or the Argi Dagi. The mountain became known as Mount Ararat. Became. So, we've been here before. When they keep trying to sell you a story and they keep using words that are not assured, it is not positive, it is not factual. What words mean? Probably. Things of that nature. We've been down this road. Now they're using began in the Middle Ages, began to be identified, became. So we should know right now Turkey is not the place. Now it says, citing historians Barosis and uh, Hieron, Hieronymus the Egyptian and Nicholas of Damascus, Josephus writes that the ark rested on, this, uh, on top of a certain mountain in Armenia in Menaeus. Uh, so what does that say about Josephus? Say it out loud. Here, he's lying. Why would he do that? Watch. Likewise, Jerome in the Latin Vulgate reads, right? Super Armenia. So they added Armenia to the Vulgate. And rested on the mountains of Armenia? He doesn't say that. So then we can't even believe it. It's, it's air at mountain. We just read, like, from the actual book, like, what does it say? It says, rested on lumbar. So if we go to the air at mountains and they don't have a lumbar, then what? This shit is added too. Now, Let's go back to this. This is going to get hot here in a second. It's going to tell us exactly what we want. So, I've tried lumbar in Turkey and they give you bull crap. I've tried lumbar in Afghanistan. It doesn't give you anything that's 
it's worth anything. Now listen, it's going to come down here at the bottom, like always. Everybody's going to say the exact same thing. What is that? That's the councils, like the Council of Nicaea and the Council of this. This is the, the modern councils or the councils at the time, right? We're coming from the Middle Age Council to the New Age Council. And the New Age Council ain't got enough sense to create something new. They're going with the old, right? Middle Age. By contrast, early Syrian and Eastern tradition placed a, uh, the Ark on Mount Judy in what today is uh, the Sernaka province in Turkey, right? They're still trying to sell you Turkey. Now, why would they keep trying to say Turkey all the time? An association that faded by the Middle Ages. So see, here's where it actually landed. And then here's pre-Middle Ages. We believe it's in Turkey. And that lie faded. And then they say it's still in Turkey. And that lie is about to fade too. Because they tell you right here in the book where it's at. An association that faded in the Middle Ages and now mostly confined to the Quran tradition. Now, see, this is where... Now, with all this rush of these people parroting other actual quality researchers, you have UB TV who does quality research and quality work. And then you have all these copycats, and then you have the copycats of TikTok as well. This man's been saying the same damn thing for a decade, and all these new hybrid flowers pop up. When I was sitting here guessing about Japheth, like it's a in Bible trivia for years, I watched one of UB's videos and he didn't worry about the people. He worried about the land. And he had a pattern in there. And I like the pattern. And see, I, I kind of adjusted some of the pattern. And, and that is how we found all these names in Asia. And that is why I started to see this shit is in Asia. And I believed everything was in Asia until I actually did it again. I opened the book and read. And that's when I read that Solomon left. But it's unique because he went to the place where Moses saw the land of promise. But the land of promise to Moses, the lawgiver, and the land of promise to Abraham are two, two different lands. And I never realized that until I started looking into this Solomon. So, the next big discovery is people going to realize that the Grand Canyon is Solomon's mine. One big giant open air mine. Not Egyptian this, not Egyptian that. Yeah, there was some shit in there, but I think it's after Solomon's mine. Because if not, why wouldn't he have just dug their shit out too? And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to prove all this. It's right here in the book. just have to read it. And that's the biggest kryptonite for all these people that run around thinking they're Superman because they got dark skin. Not because they use their capacity to its fullest abilities.
knowing is half the battle. If you go into the battle without study, then you fail. Even if you thought you succeeded, you failed. Now, what do you mean by all this? The Book of Jubilees spe specifies that the Ark came to rest on the peak of Lumbar, a mountain of Ararat. That's what they claim. Now, see, good old Sir Walter Raleigh, he devotes several chapters of his histories to the world of 1614. That's way before all this shit. And he argues that what? That in ancient times, the mountains of Ararat were understood to include not only those of Armenia, but also all of the taller mountain ranges extending into Asia. He maintains that since Armenia is not actually located east of Shinar, oh! Now you see what happens when you actually read the Bible and accept what you're reading. Do you get stuck on Shinar because it's in the beginning? And when you get to where is Shinar, one can only logically realize that it's east and it's what sits in the east, China. And then you sit there and you do the magic of we don't pronounce things the same. Shinar is China. We've been down this road. This pavement ain't moving. This ain't some river you can divert the course. This ain't some earthquake that's going to destroy the road. The path is the Silk Road. An unclean insect feeding all of society, being controlled by people who know better because they know the law. And that's why it's all toppled down, the whole industry. Because if they say we ain't gonna follow clothing laws, why would we follow fornication law? Why would we follow laws dealing with idols and other gods? If we want good good moth or caterpillar right and if, 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 we, if we want good silkworm production we need the gods of the silkworms to bless us that type of shit and then what are they doing they're actually trying to be blessed for finance mammon see mammon isn't what we think it's not the god of money it's the god of industries and no, I don't mean one. Think about this. You need leather to make purses. And you want your purse industry to be real productive. So you need a relationship with cows because cows owe that leather. Unless you do specialty like sheep or something like that. So then, again, w wouldn't your symbol be something dealing with cows because that's where your production comes from even if you mess up a purse as long as it's still material more cow skin to make into leather so again then you have these agricultural gods we need more linen or we need more cotton or we need more medical herbs and when we look at Saul, Saul has an open telephone line to the telephone line to the Most High. But what does he do? He decides to go to a witch because he did. He felt he was in a shameful state and didn't want to talk to the Most High. David sent a married man in the war and knocked up his, his wife, David never stopped talking to the Most High. You know, I know I did this, but uh, we need, can we get over this? <laughs> Keep moving. 
Oh yeah, I'll send your son after you to kill you. But uh, if you survive this, by again, reconfirming your commitment to me, yeah, you can survive. And you can survive the embarrassment of it. <clears throat> See, even if you sin, don't stop praying to the Most High. That don't mean he's going to be happy with you. But he ain't going to turn away from you. Now, if you're living and dwelling in sin, I don't know what to tell you. So again, Sir Walter Rayleigh said, this shit is an Asia, brah. And he was like, this stuff has to revolve around Shinob, brothers and sisters. The Ark must have landed somewhere in the Orient. Now, Then, that is, what is the Orient and what makes the Orient the Orient? Now, that question can't be answered that easy. Now, if you say it takes these Asians to make Orient, Asians don't want to be called Orient. They don't want to be called Oriental. So that's not going to fly. So let's go back. And they produced fruit. <clears throat> he guarded the fruit. And he gathered it. In, uh, in this year, in the seventh month. And he made wine therefrom and put it into a vessel and kept it till the fifth year. So there's your wine process right there. And so the first day of the new moon on the first month, and he celebrated with joy the day of the feast. And he made a burnt sacrifice unto the Ishi, one young ox, one ram, seven sheep, each a year old, and a kid of goats that he might make an atonement thereby for himself and his sons. So that is where we get the sacrifice of atonement. This isn't, Noah was told to do this. This is more like Noah's invention from what we read here. Now, if the other books say something different, then they say something different. And he prepared the first kid and placed some of the blood on the on the flesh that was the altar which was on the altar which he made and all the fat he laid on the altar where he made the burnt sacrifice and the ox and the ram and the sheep he laid all their flesh upon the altar and he placed all their offerings mingled with oil upon it and afterward wine on the fire which he had previously made on the altar and he placed incense on the altar and caused a sweet savor to ascend a, a, acceptable before the ishi his elohim when it goes to personal his elohim all right when it goes to personal we i believe we use elohim when we go to the most high uh, statements, it is, right? Like, even when it's the Lord thy, even though that's personal, it's still saying the Lord thy Elohim. So, and he rejoiced and drank of this right because we already know he's talking about the Eloha the highest because there is no other gods they are other creations so I think that becomes moot um, on the point of us because we know that uh, not necessarily everybody else because we don't see people saying the Eloha at all or connecting the name to what we call Allah 
it, yeah, anyway. And he rejoiced and drank the wine, he and his children with joy, and it was evening, and he went to his tent, and, be, and being drunk, he laid down to sleep, and was uncovered in his tent as he slept. And Ham saw Noah his father naked, and went forth, and told his two brethren without. Shem took his garment and arose. He and Japheth placed the garment on their shoulders and walked backward and covered the shame or nakedness of their father and their faces were backward. So their faces were not toward Noah when they covered him. And Noah awoke from his sleep and knew that his younger son had done unto him. And he cursed his son and said, Cursed be Canaan, and enslaved servant shall he be unto his brethren. And he blessed Shem and said, Blessed be the Ishi Eloha of Shem. Or again, that denotes, you know, singular. So. You can also look at that as Elohim, the, the Ishi Elo, Elohim of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So here you see <coughs> Canaan shall be the servant of Shem. So there's been time in the past that I've said Canaan will be the servant of Japheth, and you don't necessarily see that so much as uh, Canaan joining in with just the, the other progress of the nation. What you do see uh, when you read the Bible is David took over uh, the Jebusites territory and built his temple. Uh, what we are going to see is <laughs> we're going to see that Solomon has a great relation with Hiram and that Solomon built his temple, I believe, in the land of Ham, which is America, or the Americas. And I'll, I'll prove that in this video. Uh, uh, Eloha shall enlarge Japheth, and Eloha shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So it keeps saying Canaan is the servant to Shem. And Ham, and so so think, this happens to Shem because Shem takes his clothes or his garment or one of his garments. And, and Japheth, knowing to do the same, and Japheth is blessed with enlargement. Okay? So that's reproduction, right? And out of Shem... Israel shall be of the sand of the sea. So that's reproduction as well, right? So you should have a bunch of Japheth, you should have a bunch of Israelites, and few of all the other nations. From the blessing that we see here, and then thinking of the blessing that we're going to see with Abraham. And Ham knew that his father had cursed his younger son, and was displeased that he cursed his son. And he parted from his father, and he and his sons with him, Cush, Mizrahim, Put, and Canaan. And he built for himself a city, and called the name after his wife, Ni Elatamauk. And then we can always go and look for Ni Elatamauk as a city. And then it says, Ni Elatamauk, uh, land of Arat. It doesn't say it go to land of Arat. So this is not true. And I will show you, I'll prove to you what's going on here. And then it further states that Japheth saw it, and he became envious of his brother, and he too built for himself a city, and he called it after the name of his wife, Ad Atani, At Ad At. Adonesis, and Adonesis as a city 
We can always chase that, but it's not going to do us any good. It's it's kind of moot to us. And Shem dwelt with his father Noah and built a city close to his father on the mountain, and he too called it after the name of his wife, Sedequet Elab. Sedequet Elab. Something of that nature. And this one we should chase, but there's no point in chasing it, right? Because uh, we're on a different path today. And so, and behold, these three cities near Mount Lubar, Sedequatepa, or something like that, fronting the mountain on its east. So, look at that. To find Mount Ararat, the front of the mountain has a city to the east. And Na'elamak on the south, and Adatesis, or something like that, Adatanesis towards the west. And so, again, so when they say Mount Ararat is in Turkey, do I believe them? Uh, absolutely not. We we already heard a very intelligent man before this Freemasonry took hold, and, and we can see that different myths came up in the past, right? And we find that that's not true at all. It, it, it still revolves of the land, around the land of Shinar. And we cannot look at our modern map and think about it this way. We must look at the flat earth map or the zones of migration map. And that will tell us that if we look at it the right way, the earth has corners. And if you count China as a corner, what we would call on our map, East China, there's a straight coastal line from East China straight to America. That Antarctica that we look at is false. I mean, it's false. They want to give you this curve going on, right? And the curve don't touch. But right in the center is an island named Diomedes or something like that. Some, some Greek empire, emperor. And then right next to here's Alaska, and there's part of Canada, and here's America. And right here between Alaska extending into it, that's the Straits of Alexander. So how did he have time to come all the way over here? If he was supposed to be in India and then in, in, back in, in Egypt. Even though they say he died is what, what close to Babylon at his the Babylonian palace, they really don't know what to make out of, out of Alexander because they're using the wrong map or because it's the council blocking us. I mean, we're going to get to this map over here and. This is just one of them. And it tell you these are the conquests of Alexander. You look down at the bottom, here's cities founded by Alexander. There's Alexandria right here on, on the waters of India. But they keep trying to sell you Alexandria is on the coast of Africa. Still goes into, ooh, you Negroes is from Ali, uh, from from Africa, right? No, man, you just keep following that shit. So again, yeah, man, this going in this river it goes all the way around. Now it turns out everything that would be off map right here is all Paro 
Aswan, the Mekong River, that's all Egyptian shit. So when they say Alexandria is, is the river out of Egypt leading to the ocean, and what was India, the Indus River wrap all the way around India and then come out right here on the ocean. Alexander couldn't get near Egypt. You see his path, he, this is as far, this is where he got turned away. This point right here, where he just, family circus, turned the fuck around all of a sudden. Why? Because he didn't defeat them. Egypt is in India at the end of the Himalaya Mountains. Alexander was turned back from the Indus River from defeat. Here he built two damn cities. Here's the first city up here. Alexander Ishanti. Ishanti. That's, the, that's the Faringa. Don't you see Ghana? For Ghana. For Ghana. Who, didn't we just read all these Shemites formed into one under Assyria? Assyria went into what? Africa. In North Africa, Edom is ruling out of what? Where? Uh, what? Nigeria and Ghana. Why would caucus Macedonian Alexander go to a place in Ghana? Get out of here. So he built his first city there. And then he come down and do what? Alexandria of the caucus. Family circus, then he come down over here and do what? Nicaea. Oh, that's the that's the fucking council, right? Touche, Lex Will. Keep it moving. Then he gets turned around here. That's called an ass whooping. And then he hops a bunch of rivers to escape. And then he says, what? We'll build another city here, because that's as far as we can get. Then he travels down, Alexandria on the Indus. Alexandria in the Caucasus, the Indus, and then the Egyptian Alexandria on the fucking ocean where the library would be. Now why in the, would he be building all this shit out here if he's supposed to be in Africa? And so this is the Transoxus where the two rivers come down. And inside the two rivers is Babylon. And then they, they, what he, he also built Herat to the goddess, the fake goddess Hera. But they keep teaching you he went to Africa. But he actually went to Balak, which is what? pre-Moabite kingies until he destroys them and they just get they get out of there and where where do all black people go when they defeated from Asia they go to Africa don't they well that's what they want us to believe but Moab didn't go to Africa Moab went to America Moab went to the land of Ham oh you can't say that without showing them well we got to get back to the lesson then now it says here, these are the sons of Shem, Alam, Asher, Arphashid. This son, Arphashid, was born two years after the flood. And Lud and Aram, Aram and the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madi, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Tiraz. These were the sons of Noah. Now, you see... Ham mentioned Ham just got Canaan at that time. It just stopped. These are the sons of Noah. So you see Ham doing the least amount. Right? There it is. My bad. 
Bifai and his sons. And when he left, he left with Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. That's who he left with. That's Ham's sons right there. Ain't no Nimrod or nothing like that right now. So it's Canaan. Oh, shit. Right there. Mizraim. My bad. That's not Canaan. I'm drunk. I'm drunken with it. So he got Mizraim put. He doesn't have Lud yet. And he doesn't have uh, Cush. Right? Right. Lud and Cush are not brought up. All right. Okay. I'm sorry about that. So this is, and then they're telling you, our fast child is two years after the flood. They're not bringing up anybody else being born around the time of the flood. And then Lud and Aram going to be after the flood. So Elam Asher is going to be before the flood. They're giving us a, chron a chronology. Noah began to enjoin upon his sons the ordinances. His son's sons. So this is his grandsons. Noah said, I'm going to skip y'all. Uh, we got some treasons. We back. All right, so he's talking to his grandsons. He's instilling in them and joining to them the ordinance and the commandments and all the judgments that he knew. And he exhorted his sons, okay? He made them agree to observe righteousness and to cover the shame of their flesh and to bless their creator and to honor their father and mother and love thy neighbor. They're telling you right now the commandments they knew and to guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity. This is what, if we do not know the laws, this is the first thing our children should know. For owing all these things, Excuse me. For owing to these three things came the flood upon the earth, namely owing, owning to fornicating, wherein the watchers against the law of their ordinances went a whoring after the daughters of men and took themselves wives of all which they chose and made the beginning of uncleanliness. These are those parties. And now these are the sons of the watchers. They begat the Nephilim, the Nephilim, Nephilim. Now look how it's the hid, hidim, Nephilim, or Nephilim. And they were all unalike. They were all unalike. And they devoured one another. And the giant slew the Nafil, and the Nafil slew the Eljo, and the Eljo mankind, and one man another. Got a lot of freeze ups right now. So here is new words we never heard before Eljos. Nafil is Nephilim. So there's giants, and there's Nephilim, and there's Eljo, and there is man. Everyone sold himself to work iniquity and to shed blood, and the earth was filled with iniquity. And after this, they sinned against the beasts and the birds and all that moves and walks on the earth, and much blood was shed on the earth. And every imagination of desire of men imagined vanity and evil continually. continually. And the issue destroyed everything from off the face of the earth because of the wickedness of their deeds. And because the blood which they had shed in the midst of the earth, and he destroyed everything. And when they left, excuse me, and we were left, I, you, my sons, everything that entered with us into the ark, and behold, I see your work before me, and that ye do not walk in righteousness. Now remember, this is his grandsons he's talking to, his sons of sons. For in the path of destruction ye have begun to walk and ye are parting from one another and are envious one of another and 
so it comes that ye are not in harmony, my sons, with each his brother. For I see that, behold, demons have begun their seductions against you and against your children, and now I fear on your behalf that after my death ye shall shed blood of men upon the earth, that ye too will be destroyed from the face of earth. From the face of the earth. For whatsoever shed, whosoever sheddeth a man's blood, and whosoever eateth the blood of any flesh shall be destroyed from the earth. But, or that sheddeth the blood of man on earth, nor shall there be any, excuse me, there be left to him any seed or descendants living under heaven. For into Sheol, Sheol they shall go, and into the place of condemnment, condemnation, condiments, they shall descend, and in the darkness of the deep shall they be removed by a violent death. There shall no blood seen upon you. Of all the blood there shall be all the days which ye have killed any beast or cattle whatsoever flies upon the earth, and work ye a good work to your souls by covering that which has been shed on the face of the earth. Bury people. And ye shall not be like him who eats blood, but guard yourselves that none may eat blood before you. Cover the blood, for thus have I been commanded to testify to you and your children, together with all flesh. And suffer not the soul to be eaten with the flesh, that your blood, which is your life, may not be required at the hand of any flesh that sheds it on the earth. Ah. So, what does that mean? Guard yourself so you're not the one being cooked. For the earth will not be clean from blood which has been shed upon it. For only through the blood of him that is shed in it will the earth be purified throughout all its generations. Now, I really don't think Noah said any shit like that. For only through the blood of him that shed it will the earth be purified. So, okay, so only through the judgment of the murderer. Okay, so I think he did say it. I just, I just, it just comes off like Christian bull, bull, baloney. Uh, but okay, so this is, this is law. For the earth will not be clean from the blood which is shed upon it. Unless, or only, unless, through the blood of him that shed it. So, if the murderer murders somebody, the earth can only be clean if the murder, if murderer is caught. And the murderer's blood, through the blood of him, through the blood of the murderer that shed blood, will the earth be purified. So, this is why we have in states. Uh, uh, execution throughout all its generations. So think about how many generations on this land had done gone by without the earth being purified of the wickedness that was done. And so when you start to account for the in, the Indians fighting themselves, we'll do we'll do that. That's in a that's in Isaiah. And then when you start to account for the new cap, uh, the new oppressor to the Indians, which would also be our oppressor, just like the Bible says, that would also be in Isaiah. Uh, you start to see what's really going on. Uh, now, <clears throat> this this actually goes into uh, uh, Isaiah 19. The question: There's a guy asked a question. Isaiah 19. Can you explain it? When the Most High says, "Egypt, my people." No, I really can't. Um, 
it's just nothing I really want to deal with because I, why would he say all these other times that all these other people are his people? So I I I, I don't now Canaan on the other hand, what happens with Canaan? The Most High seems to favor the underdog, and from the very start, Canaan is cursed, and not for Canaan's actions, is for the actions of his father, Ham. So, now, children, hearken, work judgment and righteousness, that ye may be planted in righteousness over the face of the whole earth, and your glory be lifted up before the Most High, the Eloha, who saved me from the waters of the flood. And behold, ye will go and build yourself cities and plant in them all the plants that are, are, that are upon the earth, and moreover all fruit-bearing trees. Now you see what he said? Plant fruit-bearing trees. And what you are living in a system that's all male trees that bear no fruit. Right? Oh, allergy season. For three years, the fruit of... Okay, so... For three years, everything that is eaten... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, everything that is eaten will not be gathered. And in the fourth year, its fruit will be accounted holy. And they will offer the first fruits acceptable before the, the Most High God. Now, see, see how that goes. Who created the heaven and the earth and all things? Let them offer in abundance the first of the wine and oil as first fruits on the altar of the Ishi who receives it. And what is left, the servants of the house of the Ishi eat before the altar which receives it. All right, so this is the answer to Passover right here. Is the answer to all the sacrifices why when we don't have Levite uh, had to do this much this is the moment I realized you know one of one of the guys already sent me uh this showing the Levitical law in chapter uh, two verse fourteen if thou offer a meat offering of thy first fruits under the issue thou shalt Offer for meat the offering of thy first fruits, green ears of corn dried by the fire, even corn beaten out of full ears. So when we combine these two, this is the sacrifice. It's actually fruit as the meat offering. You can see these children he's telling. He himself sacrificed lamb and ox. He's teaching his children, y'all ass ain't righteous. Y'all ass is, is walking towards evil. What condition are we in? We're not considered righteous. We're not even considered the Israelites. We're considered the remnant of Judah and the remnant of Ephraim. And, right? So, yeah, man, he's in the same position that the children of Noah is in. As the days, last days be like the days of Noah. So, it's all right here. So you can't do this alone, man. And if, if, if my man didn't call me and just lay it down what it is, we wouldn't see this for what it was. And in the first, and in the fifth year, make ye the release so that ye release it in righteousness and uprightness and Ye shall be righteous, and all that you plant shall prosper. Again, you can't plant something and then collect it at harvest and say it's righteous. That's, that's just planting some stuff. It got to stay connected to the vine. Whatever it does, if it die, wither, fall off, that's none of your concern. Four years from that specific, okay, that's not pluck one, pluck. That's, if anything, that's I got my shitty garden over there, and I got my my attempted righteous garden over there. So
For thus did Enoch, the father of your father, command Methuselah, his son, Methuselah, his son, Lamech, and Lamech commanded me all the things which his father commanded him. And also I will give you a commandment, my sons, as Enoch commanded his son in the first jubilee. The first jubilee is with Enoch while still living, the seventh in his generation, or well, the first jubilees. Maybe I'm saying that wrong. Maybe the first jubilee is with Adam, and I'm not respecting that because I skipped so many chapters. So, yeah, so mm, let's not do that anymore. While still, at least I caught it. I'm not just saying some shit, you know. Ah, while still living, the seventh, the seventh in his generation, he commanded the test and testified to his son and to his son's sons until the day of his death. Now, now let's slide on over to chapter 8. In the 29th Jubilee, in the first week, so again, if you count back, you're only at the 29th Jubilee, it, it, and they're seven years apart, right? That's that skipping over again. Can't do that. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. In the beginning, thereof, our fat shed, our fat child, our fat shad, took to himself a wife whose name was Rasuja, the daughter of Susanna, the daughter of Elam, and he bare him a son. She bare him a son in the third year in this week and he called his name Cainim, Cainim, and the son grew and his father taught him writing and he went to see for himself a place where he might seize for himself a city and he found writing which former generations had carved on the rock and he read what was thereon, and he transcribed it, and sinned owing to it. For it contained the teachings of the watchers in accordance with which they used to observe the omens of the sun and the moon and the stars in all the signs of heaven. So he found what? He found what they call antiquity. He found what? Writings. No, he found an artifact. In the writings from former generations, they carved on a rock. And it's legible. So he transcribed what they wrote. They all wrote in Hebrew. We're going to learn this in chapter 11 and 12 when we get up here. 12 and 13, excuse me. Because we're going to learn about Abraham, and he had to learn, and for him to learn, he had to learn Hebrew himself. Abraham wasn't speaking Hebrew. The watchers were speaking Hebrew. Abraham was part of what? Nimrod's cult with Terah. His father was what? One of Nimrod's captains. The captain of the idols type shit. His workman. So you see, this child of Shem, Canaan, Cainim, son of our fat child, our fashion, he found the watcher's writings, he translated the watcher's writings, the omens of the sun and the moon and the stars, the signs in heaven. And he wrote it down and said nothing regarding it, for he was afraid to speak to Noah about it, lest he should be angry with him on the account of it. Because what did Noah just do? He just taught him not to walk in the ways of wicked. And because he knew this information, he, he what? 
he transcribed it and he hid it to my secret now. And in the 13th Jubilee, in the second week of the first year, he took himself a wife named Melka, the daughter of Mahdi, the son of Japheth. And in the fourth year, he begot a son called his name Selah. And what does Selah mean? Because we see this word in Psalms all the time. It means truly I have been sent. In the fourth year of Salah being born, Salah grew up and took himself a wife. Wife was Mu'ak, daughter of Kesed, his father's brother. In the one and thirtieth Jubilee, 31st. In the fifth week, in the first year thereof. So it's the first year of that Jubilee, the bracket of seven. And she bare him a son in the fifth year thereof, and he called the name Eber. And he took himself a wife, and her name was Azura, or Azurad, the daughter of Nebrod. In the 32nd Jubilee, in the seventh week, in the third year. And in the sixth year thereof she bare him a son and called his name Peleg, for in those days that he was born, the children of Noah began to divide the earth amongst themselves. For this reason he called the name Peleg, and they divided it secretly amongst themselves and told it to Noah. And it came to pass in the beginning of the 33rd Jubilee, isn't it weird that they just straight up write 33rd instead of 30 and 3? Or 3 and 30? Anyway, 33rd Jubilee, they divided the earth into three parts. For Shem, for Ham, and for Japheth, in accordance to the inheritance of each. In the first year, in the first week, when one of us who had been sent was with them. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh, and they and their children, and he divided the earth into lots, which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands and took the writings out of the bosom of Noah. Now, they already tried to secretly divide it, and Noah said, no, nah, that's not going to work. Now Noah has taken control and said, now we're going to divide it. And there came forth on the writing as Shem's lot in the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons, for the generations of eternity, from the middle of the mountain range of Rapha, from the mouth of the water, from the river Timna, as it and his portion goes towards the west through the mist of the river, and it extends till it reaches the waters of the abyss, out of which the river goes forth and pours into the sea of Miat. And this river flows into the great sea, and all that is towards the north is Japheth. And all that's towards the south belongs to Shem. And it extends till it reach, reaches Karso. This is the bosom of the tongue, which is towards the south. And his portion extends along the great sea. And it extends in a straight line till it reaches the west of the tongue, which looks towards the south. For this sea is named the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Not the Mediterranean. Just wait. They're going to they they come right out and tell us a little bit later. Same chapter. And it turns from here towards the south where it meets the mouth of the great sea on the shore of its waters and it extends 
to the west to Afra. And it extends till it reaches the waters of Guyon. That's not Africa. Don't, don't do that. Till it reaches the river of Guyon and to the south of the waters of Guyon to the banks of this river. It extends towards the east until it reaches Eden to the south thereof and to the south and from the east of the whole land of Eden and the whole of the east and it turns to the east and proceeds till it reaches the east of the mountain in Rafa and it descends to the bank of the mouth of the river Tina. This portion came forth by lot lottery for Shem and his son that they should possess it forever under the generations for moreover and Noah rejoiced that his portion came forth that this portion came forth for Shem and for his son and he remembered all that he had spoken out of the mouth in prophecy for he said blessed be the Ishialoha of Shem and may the Ishi dwell in the dwelling of Shem. And he knew that the garden is the holy of holies and that the dwelling and the dwelling of the Ishi. And Mount Sinai, so you have the garden, you have Mount Sinai, and that the garden, excuse me. Is the holy holy and the dwelling place in Mount Sinai, the center of the desert, and the Mount Zion. So the garden, Mount Sinai, and Mount Zion all form a triangle on the map. And these are the center, the center of the navel of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other. And blessed be the Eloha of Elohim. See right there, that's a perfect sentence to be able to say how those words work. Elohim is many. You see this lower God and apostrophe S? Those are creations. They're not actually gods. But they're so powerful compared to us that we would acknowledge them that way. Because why? Because men have taken to worship to them. <clears throat> and he blessed the Eloha of the Elohim who had put the word of the Ishi into his mouth and the Ishi forevermore. And he knew that a blessed portion and a blessing had come unto Shem and to his sons under the generations forever. The whole land of Edom and the whole land of the Red Sea and the whole land east and India. Let's ignore what they said before this. With from river to river, from this territory to that territory, that might be renamed India has not been renamed. And India is in such a position that we look at everything east, we would call that China. The Asian territories, which would which would show if this says east of India and everything uh, uh, east of India, including India, then somebody in a place that they shouldn't be. And on the Red Sea and the mountains thereof, so the Red Sea connected to the mountains. And again, if all this shit revolves around India, that's the Himalaya mountain system. This isn't. This is what I mean. It, it's cool. People can think what they want. People can think whatever they want. I hate to say this to you. Look, I, I promise the best I can. This isn't ego when I say this. Since this was discovered. Now you have Google being altered every step of the way. So when we type in Red Sea China, they're not going to show us the Red Sea. They're going to show us 
everything that has China to deal with what they call the Red Sea in Arabia. But that's not what we're looking for. Um, so to ignore all this, we're just going to go to images because the picture says a thousand words. Now, again, when you look at the Red Sea of China, do you really fucking Red Beach, Panjin? Now do you understand? This is what algae bloom. Well, you can see it. This damn shit sticking up out of the water. But they got salt bloom too. This is presumably when you see this, right? It, let's let's try this instead of China. Let's try Himalaya. I'm spelling it wrong. That's good. Don't spell it right. So, when I say the Himalayas, why do they show this? But they won't show me its connection to the Himalayas. But here you get the summary of Himalayas and how it extends into China. So then you already know you just go back to China. You want Pajan or whatever, however they pronounce it, right? Panjan. And then you want the distance from Panjan to the Himalayas. It's, it's, it's not that hard anymore. You just, just go by what the book says. There's a lot of people out there really putting honest effort in. And there's a lot of parrots. Right? And parrots are parroting for money. So you're going to find more people saying the wrong stuff than the right stuff. Now I tell you right here, this is Sim's portion. The whole land of the Red Sea. Now what word did I have to type in to get Red Sea? I had to type in China. So the land of the Red Sea is China. Now you see how that works? Now I say, and the whole land east of India. Now again, if you say China is a little to the north and east, well, what's below China in the southeast? Well, that's Cambodia and Vietnam and all those countries. Right here, this word of the, of the previous people is supposed to be Noah's words. Recorded. Noah's words say our land is the Asia territory of the East. And they say, and the, and, and the Red Sea and the mountains thereof, see how I say Red Sea twice? Because the Red Sea is water and extend to other land. And it say the Red Sea where it extend to other lands and the mountains thereof and the land of Bashan. So you should know where the land of Bashan is right now. Now, if you take this section and then work your way backwards and it tell you how far the territory extend out of East Asia into West Asia, how much is Shem's territory? And then you'll understand Shem's territory. Now, if Shem getting this much of uh, 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 Asia, where is Ham's territory supposed to be at? Since all these people that are classified as Hamites live in India and China and Indonesia and Cambodia and North v Vietnam and North Korea and South Korea and Japan. Where could their land actually be? So we say, in all the land of Lebanon, and so to find Lebanon, we got to type in something unique. We've studied Lebanon before. And in to find Lebanon, we got to type in what the mountains of Lebanon are called. And Lebanon is called Laban because the mountains are snow capped. N not because Laban is white or caucus or pale, 
but because the snow cap. So thought I had it already. There it is. No, it's not. All right, so when we type in White Mountains, Asia, this is, again, we've done this before. There ain't no point in me putting up the same shit I done had in videos two years ago. They, the shit's in Asia, the Laban mean White Mountains because of snow caps. You, the viewer, you've been here so long. The new guy, you got to do your own study, man. You know, what is the White Mountains in China? You can look at it that way. But right here, the Chengbai Mountains. You see right here on this little part, it says Afghan, Pakistan, and separate the border of the two. Now keep this in mind, because all this got to do with what we did with the, the mountains of uh, Alexander's Conquest. Remember, this, this is it right here. All the stand countries. And then we will take us right over to this new map. This is gonna get you know if you, if you like the study and this is this is gonna be the best video ever because now you nobody can argue no bull crap. You can always shut them down. You know where you're from. You're gonna see it yourself. Now you say you went to the White Mountains and the islands of Kaftor. So I, I would bet they changed that name, but I'm sure this stuff ain't hard to find. <clears throat> we know where the whole of the land is. Chasing islands ain't going to do us no good. You say, and all the mountains of Sinar and Amana, and the mountains of Asher in the north. So that's that Mongol area. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has nothing to do with Mongols. They took that land from Asher and all the land of Elam, Asher, and Babel. Do you see right there? Babel's in the same area, like I've been saying the whole time. This ain't a me thing. Let's keep going. And Susan, and remember when we go to maps like this, and it say Susanna somewhere up in, uh, no, it would be off map. It'd be over. It'd be up in this area, off, way off, way off camera. And this, uh, this shows more India. This map shows more of this area so susana is up in here in the north i've seen it on maps before uh and media or media ma media all right and all the mountains of ararat and all the regions beyond the sea so again they're talking about east asia not no ararat just like Sir Walter Raleigh said, this shit ain't in no freaking Turkey, which is on the west end of Asia. It's got to be on the east end of Asia, somewhere in the Orient. Again, this is not the Ark of the Covenant. This is the Ark of Noah. So let's go back to this and say, which is beyond the mountains of Asher towards the north a blessed and spacious land. We call that Siberia, don't we? And all that is in it is good. Now listen, very close. And Ham came forth, the second portion. Beyond the Guyon, towards the south, to the right of the garden, which extends towards the south and it extends to all the mountains of fire, I mean the Smoky Mountains. Lex will stop saying stop. That's not true. Let's go to the book of Jashir, chapter 10. We're switching books. We're going to sw just switch books. Wait, in the middle of the lesson, you're going to switch to another book? Book of Jashir, chapter 10. In the children of Gomer, verse 8. We're going to nine. And the children of Gomer, according to their cities, were the Franklin who dwell in the land of Franza. We know that's France. By the river Franza, that river cannot be found because it's not a freaking river. So I was studying this 
and I was, I was, I was, I was, I was loving it, because this, this, this kind of, UB did this, and I was like, whoa, he's got half this shit already. By the river Sena or Senea, Sena. So that's the river of the Eiffel Tower. Now, the river Franza is actually. It's a, it's a trick. There ain't no river Franza. It's the French Riviera, the river of France. The river of France ain't no river of France. It's the fucking coastline. The French Riviera is a series of cities that were set up on the coastline. This is why this one's hard to find. So, then the children of Refa, Refash, are the Bartonum, who dwell in the Bartona by the river Leda, which empties into the great sea Guyon. That is the ocean. So, if we go back here, Jubilees 8, he said the mountain of fire. Right? And he said, the second portion beyond the Guyon towards the south. So if this is telling us that the Guyon is next to the ocean, now watch this. First, we're gonna say, what is the Leda River? And they drop the H and they say, that's North Germany. So Bartonum are a portion, the Refath are portion of the Bartonum are in Germany. The Leda River empties into the Great Sea. So watch this. We go to Leader River. This is how you do it. You take this, you take all this as a program. You just run this your little algorithm to, to all this stuff in these books. And they say the progression, right? What did it just say back here? It empties. The progression empties into the Guyon River. All right. So the Leader River empties into the elms, which they call the North Sea, which is Oceanus, called the Guyon Sea. Let's go to the North Sea. This is how you do it. Mimic this and make the bunch of videos. Not mimic the North Sea to, to say this is Guyon take these other names and break them down so and then teach them to your children the north sea is between great britain denmark norway germany the netherlands belgium france so it sits in the center of them. that is considered the north sea right <coughs> and then we we'll just go ahead and How do you spell that? G I? Is it G I or G I? Let's see real quick. G I H. Guion. I don't think it's going to say Guion on here, but it's all good. This is where it is. <coughs> this would be your North Sea. Okay. And so when you say the North Sea, and then what does it say about it? It says, they dwell in the land of Alida. It empties into the great Guyon. So this little patch of sea is not the great Guyon. The whole sea would be Guyon. So if we look at a map, this should become very simple. What is the land west of the North Sea? Ordered on um, Great Britain to the southwest. Well, that's not it. And west, still not it. Orkney and this other island is the northwest. Norway to the east. Denmark to the east. So nothing's really west of it. So if we sat here and say, let's see the North Sea.
right? And you see how this is the North Sea too. So this stuff sits in the North Sea, but that's not technically the North Sea. So if we went to a map, in case you are wondering, is the North Sea separate from the Atlantic Ocean? The, the arm of the Atlantic Ocean. It is the arm of the Atlantic Ocean, which means the North Sea is not really separate from the Atlantic Ocean, which would then mean that the Atlantic Ocean is Gaia. Now, Gaia is also the name of the only natural spring in the vicinity of Jerusalem. So again, they just they're just renaming the same shit over and over again. Even our people now when we get to these biblical rivers they feed a specific river i don't we got lots of fucking freeze ups now so let's get rid of this one i know that one's a big so now if we say from research, at least the research done here, the Atlantic Ocean is the biblical Gaia. We just leave here. We know the answer. Now let's go back. <coughs> the land of Ham. He came forth for his portion which would be the land, and beyond the Guyon, towards the south, to the right of the garden, which extends towards the south. So is the garden one of the islands? I mean, think about it. towards the south and to the right doesn't, based on these mountains on fire, okay, if the Guyon is the Atlantic, the mountains on fire is the Smoky Mountains, extending towards the south. But the east and west part becomes confusing right here. Unless the map is stationary, if the map that they're looking at is a circle and it's stationary, The east continues one way, west continues one way, but not so how we read our map. East and west becomes right and left from a position. So without the position, east and west is actually meaningless. So now we have a position. Now, if they're looking at a map that looks like a disc, a plate, and they already said down here, and south just means to the outside of the plate. North means to the inside of the plate towards what? The center which would be the, the man on the silver mountain, the magnetic mountain. So left and right is east and west. So when we're looking down here at India, east is that way. But if we continue with east on the plate, east is that way at the top of the map. If it's a circle. They're not spinning the map to say, we're going to highlight this point now. No, 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 no. This is one point, this is another point, and this is the other point. That's like having the zones of migration map without being able to turn it. East continues one way.
technically all the way around. If you say, here's India at the bottom, west of India, then you're going the other way around until you end up back at India. You just traveled west continuously. So think about this and think the map don't move and it's a circle. Then it becomes very obvious. What ex it extends towards the south, but you're looking at a plate. So you just said his shit is the opposite of where Shem shit is. So south for Shem is down, but south for Ham would be north for us. Think about it. South is always going to be the outside barrier. So it continues south. And then again, if you travel this way to get east, it's this way to get west, right? And then you say towards the south and extends towards the fire and towards the west, which within it, it wouldn't be, you have to turn our map upside down because you own a plate. So instead of further east, that, that, that wouldn't be right. It'd be this way. So then we have to look at a map upside down. Florida is this way, California is this way, right? But east and west would not be the same. I know this is confusing, especially without a visual. There's no visual I can get because no map look like a plate. I could make the map and take a week. I could draw some shit to get week. That's right, I could. All right. And see, this is what gives it away, the mountains on fire. See, so this is going to be Asia. Okay? So this in the center is north. This is going to be America. Or the Americas. Remember, America extends down, excuse me, to the south, right? Is it South America, Central, excuse me, America, Central America, down to the south. And you say, Guillaume, so you got Europe and Africa, and put a e EU in Africa, or AF, right? Remember, everything on the outside of the circle is south. The center of the circle is north. Everything to the outside is south. So here go east, Shinar, right? And then he say, the river Guyon is the Atlantic. So that would be between America and Europe. And it say, going down south, the mountains of fire, that, that's going to be, you know, African mountains that smoke ain't, the, the, the Appalachian mountains, the only mountains that smoke. Now, the islands to the east, and extends to the mountains of fire, and it extends towards the west. Now, that's where it gets confusing. From this position, where are we talking? West of the land and the islands are out there? That's, that'd be Hawaii. Not, excuse me, I, I previously thought that would be the islands of like Jamaica and shit, the Caribbean. And that just depends. If there is a center line and they go, oh, this side is west and this side is east, then yeah. But if you continue with the circle, from the location that you're talking about. From this position, the west, uh, the west is still going to be go opposite east, which is going to be clockwise. So that's going to point to Hawaii and, and things out there. That would most likely be Eden, Rapa Nui and shit, from what I can understand here. Now, if I'm misunderstanding this, we can debate it sensibly. 
you know. <clears throat> it extends the mountain towards a fire, towards the west, to the Sea of Atel. And so, again, man, there's going to be some record of what the Sea of Atel is. It's just, do you believe the record? And it extends towards the west till it reaches the Sea of Mauk, and that sea into which everything is, is not destroyed descends. Now, again, I'm willing to bet if you go and you talk to be, uh, to, to, to fishermen and to, to navy men, they gonna understand what this means. See, the ocean seemed like to clean itself, it got a drain too, and that's what it sounded like you're talking about. Talking about sounded like you're talking about an ocean drain. Now, does it? I'm I don't know, but why would they word it like this if they didn't? And it goes towards the north to the limits of Gadir and goes forth towards the coast of the waters of the sea to the waters of the great sea till it draws near to the river of Gion. So the Gion is the ocean. The river Gion is something else. The Gion Spring, something else. And I have to leave it at that because I do not know. Now, if you think about this to an extent, that's just a circle. You just explained the encircling of the Americas. You have every right to disagree. Explain the mountains on fire. You got to have fire to have smoke. If you sit here and say the mountains on fire, latitude northeast, I mean east and west, Mount St. Helens and the Smoky Mountains ain't that far away from each other on the latitude line. Is that latitude and longitude? Oh man, I gotta go back to school. So Think about it that way, and they're kind of close to each other. Not that they're on either side of the same continent, but they're on the same continent, which would be the land, if it, if you, I mean, it fits. No other piece fits that shit. You gotta understand, this is ham. So he need a big, giant amount of land. So. If the Canaanites are mingling with the Egyptians and the Egyptians are mingling with other children of Ham, everybody's going to have pyramids. And when Egypt is destroyed and then conquered with Alexander and these people just, we don't want to play with this shit no more, let's go somewhere. Where are they going to go besides back to the land of Ham? When Babylonians capture the Philistines and take them, remove them from the record of history, and then they just happen to be uh, the, the American Indians just to ha happen to live five tribes the exact same way the Philistines did. Bringing up UB again, showing that they bury the same way. Biblical Egypt, meaning Genesis is a flash pan, Excuse me, flash in the pan, and it's done. Whatever happened before Genesis, that's truly the fame of Egypt. Well, before and up until uh, Exodus. Once that's done, that's no more. The dragon god is gone. The fish in the sea is gone. And their metaphors as well. The pharaoh's gone. Other nations are trying to pretend to play pharaoh. The people gone. Other people trying to play, play, play the people. Who is the last people that fought the Egyptians that we have recorded in the Bible? Not in the world. In the Bible, is that that 
that's the Greeks, right? And before the Greeks fought the Egyptians, they fought Babylon and won Babylon. So the Greeks put on the hat of the Babylonians and then they went and fought Egypt. I don't think they get tired of that. How many of y'all is tired of being oppressed in America? You're just like, I, I don't even want to be here. I just ready to walk, walk to Canada and see if I can walk to, to the old world. Same thing. Same mentality. Same moments. Just different time. Different time in history. But the nothing new under the sun. The exact same feelings. Nothing new under the sun. And we know what Jafet's land is, because it said to the north shit is, uh, is, is, is when it extends to this river, to the north is Shem's, and to the south is going to be Jafet, because the Most High put Ham in a whole different land. He put Ham in the Americas. This is why everywhere you go in America, they point to the Asian and say, he to what? He either the indigenous or the native. Now we read his Bible. Plenty of Shem's people came and did this to Hamites and that. You got to eat them. We destroyed the, the Hittites. I mean, uh, not the Hittites, but I uh, can't remember what it is. It's, 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 really, it's, it's going to boil down to the Koreans, but that, that's, what, that's what it is. So where was they home? Remember, a Chino mean Chinese people. That's in Mexico. Remember, you're dealing with the oppressor here. And he pushed them. Now he letting them back in. I'll go to the Book of Mormons. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'll go to the, 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 the literature around, the discussions around the Book of Mormon. I'll show you. They tell you. We got your land for 100 years. I go to the Micmac. The Micmac and the French. We got your land. That's what it is. Not Mormons. Excuse me. It's the Micmac and the French. We got your land for a hundred years. The hundred years is up. Ask yourself, how come every vehicle in the United States is, is of war is named after an Indian tribe? This is a pinata. I got a stick in my head. This is about to bust by my mind. I'm just joking. Hey, this is what it is. Hey, you, 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 listen. Joe tells me all the time, you're ahead of the curve. I taught the Israelites were in America. They're day on fire with TikTok right now. How long is it going to take them to realize mm, it's just after Solomon? Solomon sets some stuff up here. Does that mean the kingdom was here? Well, it means Solomon's kingdom could have been here. Surely, the, 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 the Grand Canyon's one big open mind. Who has the most famous mind of all time? It's King Solomon. You almost don't even have to research this, but we will. We have no choice. We must prove all things, because this is what it says. And this isn't my story. This isn't your story. It's not our story. It's his. And he has given us life and will and a plan. And if we don't willfully uphold the plan, what could we actually mean to something that created us? Something that, that makes tornadoes and pushes over thousands of trees in one stroke. So it's all right here. And this is the land which came forth, the, I believe this is the Americas, for Ham as the portion which he was occupy, was to occupy for himself and his sons unto their generations forever. And Japheth came forth in the third portion beyond the Tina River to the north of the outflow of its waters and it extends to the north. Now, we read this about Japheth and we go and then we read 
the book of Jashir, and we read how Nimrod then went and took the land from Japheth. Now, we continue reading in the Bible, and we're going to read how Canaan decided that they not going to live in the land of Ham. They, not, they don't like it. And now we're going to find out why all the people who's, who's Austronesian, I know I'm not saying that right, I'm just, I'm just there's all, the East Asians, all are these Canaanites. The Sinite is the Chinese, that's the easiest to find right off the bat. So once you realize they're all relatives, the gig is up. Japheth came forth for the third portion beyond the Tina River to the north, and it overflows its waters and extends to the north, easterly to the whole region of Gog and to all the country east thereof. You see all that east territory, all right, below the Tina River. And it extends northerly to the north, and it extends to the mountains of Quelt. Quelt? toward the north, towards the Sea of Muak. So see how Muak was brought up before? So this is what? When the sides of America meets the sides of Europe. And it goes forth to the east of Gidar, as far as the region of the waters of the sea, and it extends until it approaches the west of Far, and it returns towards Afrak and extends easterly to the waters of the Sea of Miat and extends to the region of the River Tinna to in a northeasterly direction and until it approaches the boundaries of the river, a boundary of its rivers towards the mountain of Rafa and it turns to you see how it patches. The land of Ham is all to Ham self. The land of Shem and Japheth is shared to a degree, right? Asia is split for them. This land in which came forth to Japheth and his sons is a portion of his inheritance which should be which he should possess for himself and his sons and their generations forever. Five great islands and the, a great land in the north. But it is cold, and in the land of Ham it is hot, and in the land of Shem it is neither hot nor cold, but it is of blended cold and cold and heat. Now, see, this is very interesting because <coughs> how this is all written. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, I think we're going to stop right there. There's nothing in this video. That should be considered 100 or any shit like that. We must understand we are conquered people. All the information that we get, we get from other nations. So much so that even if we wrote something in the past, we wouldn't even know to acknowledge that we wrote it. Keep these things in mind. This is not perfect. It's not perfected. It's not even 100% sure. It's technically a theory based on when we're reading these, when they say the West versus, you know, which way should it be versus, because sometimes it doesn't really sound solid. If you can prove that the land of Ham is not the Americas, then prove it. Nothing in this is foundational except for these books we read. This is a person's opinion. And I leave, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of the material up on, you know, that we worked on on screen. Um, I think we hit most of these tabs. The biggest tab I think of importance are these uh, 
maps. When we go to verses 12 and 13, freezy freezies. Okay, so I'm having a lot of issues with this now. I think we're going to wrap up here. Biggest thing out of this is going to be these maps uh, leading on to the next chapters of the book. I appreciate you all spending two hours uh, seeing this. Uh, if you appreciate what I've done, uh, you please uh, think about uh, donating and helping us out so we can go further. May the Most High bless you all. Shalom.